Hello again. So it's Ken, Ken Mead, and today we're going to do some chair based stretching exercises. I will do some standing up or a standing up uh, stretching video in the future, but today we're going to do chair based stretching. So if you're ready, let's get straight into it without my waffling. So I want you to sit on the edge of the chair. Where the top of the legs meet your buttocks, you have a groove called the gluteal sulcus. You want that to be on the very edge of the chair, uh, the first or third of the chair. For this, for the moment, we'll have our feet about the same distance as our hips or our shoulders apart, feet parallel to each other. Nice and upright, so follow all the other previous instructions on posture. So upright, so the head is if suspended from above, lifting, feeling the head, pull back, feeling the head, jaw parallel to the floor. Uh, small gaps underneath each armpit, sink the chest to round the upper back, not hunch the upper back, or not hollow the chest, but just sink the chest to round the upper back, sink your ribs to fill the lower back, and sitting tall all the way up through these stretches. So we'll start with just some basic stretches for our hands. So I want you to touch the fingertips together, elbows point out towards the walls, I just want you to push in. Sink the chest, feel the elasticity across your shoulder blades. So round the back, you've got that one in, uh, Tai Chi they call the, the turtle, turtle shell back, pushing the fingers in, stretching the fingers and stretching across the shoulders as well. Okay, and then just slide the fingers in together. Just loosen up the hands. This is a, a good sequence for martial artists who use, or in Chinese martial arts, we use our hands a lot. So hand care is very important. Hitting the, the webs of the, the thumbs and the index finger together, Point we call the, the hiku point in uh, traditional Chinese medicine, the tiger's jaw. Hitting them together, turn them over, hitting them again. <clears throat> Take this, this is called the eye of the phoenix knuckle. So punch, I'm just wanting to punch the center of the hand. Acupuncture point in the center of the hand called the lao point. So you're stimulating the lao point in the center of the hand. Do the other hand, uh, phoenix eye, hitting into the center of the hand. Hit the backs of the hands together. Turn over, hit the backs of the hands together. Back arms. Thank you. Thank you. I'm far too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Make your hands into a hollow fist, put the thumb in it, and twist and pull. Be careful if you do have any joint problems here. Twist and pull. Twist. Twisting and pulling. Okay, then twist the fingers, loosen the wrists. Loosen the wrists. Okay, let's start the stretches. So I want to, yeah, so in Tai Chi we tend to start with the left side first in everything we do. We know the world is a it's a right-handed world. Uh, most people on the planet are right-handed. And even the people who, who who are left-handed, they live in a right-handed world, so they tend to use their right hand for everything. Uh, left and right people use their right hand to do all their, their, everything they do. So we'll start in touch, we tend to start with a, I'm waffling on, I said, we'll start. So you're gonna use your left hand, so mirror me, okay? I'm gonna use my right hand, but mirror me. So use your left hand, point your left palm towards the floor, then point the fingers towards the floor, take the other hand and push in. Elbows point towards the walls, fingers point towards the ceiling and to the floor. Nice and upright, holding the stretch, but make sure you're not holding your breath. On the other palm towards the floor, point the fingers towards the floor, take the other hand and push in again. Elbows point towards the walls, fingers point towards the ceiling and to the floor. Holding the stretch. You can hold this for, I don't know, two, three breaths, five breaths. Now let's place your left hand across your chest. Bring your right hand up and wrap your fist around your thumb and pull down, forwards and away from you. This part of the thumb is called the femur. Pull down. Sitting up, you want a straight line. You want a straight line between your middle finger and your elbow. And pulling down. Holding the stretch, but make sure you're not holding your brain. Place the other hand across your chest. Bring the hand up. Uh, wrap your fist around your thumb. Pull forwards, down and away from you. Again, keep the straight line between your middle finger and your elbow. Holding the stretch, but make sure you're not holding your breath. Sitting tall. Holding the stretch. Okay. Arms out in front of you. Touch your thumbs together. Then point your left thumb towards the floor. Touch 
Push your right thumb onto the back of your left hand, reach the fingers over, push in with the thumb and pull back with the fingers. Arm nice and straight, so you feel this from the wrist to the elbow to the shoulder. Holding this stretch, but make sure you're not holding your breath. Sitting tall. Relax, the thumbs touch together. And point your other thumb towards the floor. Touch the thumb onto the back of the hand, reach the fingers over, push in with the thumb and pull back with the fingers. And again, arm nice and straight, you feel this stretch from the wrist to your elbow to your shoulder. Holding this stretch. But make sure you're not holding your brain. Okay, sitting up. So I want you to take your left hand and touch the cervical region of the spine there. Walk the fingers down your back. Try and point your elbow up towards uh, the sky, towards the ceiling. Take the other hand on top of the elbow and pull down. Stretch down there, the tricep muscles here. Holding the stretch but not holding back. Make sure you're not sticking your chest or your ribs out. If you wanted an extra stretch here, you could take your hand off the elbow, reach around and grip the fingers and pull down. Uh, make sure you're not mucking your posture up here, so sink the chest, round back, sink the ribs to fill the lower back. If you have trouble doing this, you can do this with like a, a tea towel behind your back, grip it in both hands and pull down to stretch right down here, but grab the fingers if you can. Holding the stretch but you're not holding your breath. And relax. Take the other hand and touch the cervical region of the spine and the neck. Walk the fingers down, those spinal process, those knobbly parts of the spine. Try and point the elbow up towards the ceiling, towards the sky. Take the other hand on top of the elbow and pull down. Again, if you want an extra stretch, you can do this. You could take the hand off the elbow, reach around, grab the fingers and pull down. Again, make sure you're not sticking your ribs and your chest out or curving in the lower back. Again, if you have trouble doing this, you can do it with a tea towel or a cloth. Just grip it in both hands and pull down. A nice stretch. It's a really good one if you'd have problems with the, the muscles in the neck, this one, the mastoid or the the stretch not holding the breath. Then relax, so let's do the neck. So hands on top of the thighs and the knees meet. I need to push down with your left foot to your left hand, push up through the body, push your head over to your to the other side, to your right side. Make sure you're not sticking the chest or the ribs out here. Holding the stretch. Feel the stretch all up the, the left side of your body from the from the wrist to the neck, from the ankle to the neck. Holding the stretch, we're not holding your breath. Stretching those anatomy trains on the side of the body, those lateral lines, and you relax. They contract back. And push down with your right foot, your right hand. Push up through the body, push your head over to your left side. And make sure you're not sticking the chest or the ribs out or curving in the lower back. Feel this stretch from the wrist to the, to the neck, from the ankle to the neck. Stretching up the side of the body. Like the stretching of a spring or an elastic band. So when you relax, it contracts back. Okay, push down with both hands, push up through the body, push the head up and back without sticking the chest or the ribs out or curving in the lower back. Feel the stretch all up the front of the body from the toes all the way up into the neck. Again, like the stretching of a spring or an elastic band. So when you relax, it contracts back. Then grip the floor with the toes, grip your knees with your fingers and pull your chin towards your chest without hunching your back or bulging out the lower back. Feel a stretch up the back of the body from the toes along the soles of the feet to the top of the head, the forehead to the nose. Nice stretch, right? Stretching for spring or an elastic band. Holding the stretch, but again, make sure you're not holding and just pull back. And you have that lifting and floating thing there. Place your left hand onto your right shoulder. Place your right hand onto your left elbow and pull down. Pull the palm down towards your solar plexus, towards the back. Holding the stretch, but you're not holding your breath. Stretching that, the middle deltoid muscle here. Holding the stretch, but again, you're not holding your breath. There's so plenty. You can hold the stretches for short periods or longer periods if you want to. I'm just going through the way that I would do Place your right hand onto your left shoulder, place the hand onto the elbow, pull the palm down towards your towards your belly. Sitting up, holding the stretch, make sure you're not holding your breath. Again, you stretch in the middle of the deltoid muscle. Okay. Then relax. Take your hands behind your back. Take your hands behind your back. Palm on palm and take your hands up your back as high as you can go. Then push your shoulders back, push your neck back, make sure you're not flaring ribs out or curving in the lower back, push the lower back. Back of your breath, stretching the, the front down the muscles. Sink the chest around the back, head up. Relax and place your left hand over your right shoulder, place your right hand onto your left elbow, pull down again with this one, scoop to the side and turn to that side ever so slightly. Holding the stretch, but you're not holding your breath. Stretching the rear deltoid now, with the arm joins onto your shoulder blade. Holding the stretch, not the breath. Place your right hand onto your left shoulder, left hand onto your right elbow, pull down and pull to the side. Pull down and scoop to the side, turn to the side, after the slide, keep it nice and upright, 
holding this stretch, but you're not holding your breath. And then you're stretching that down toward the swan. Coming back, the arm to the shoulder. Holding the stretch, not the breath. So that's the, the deltoid muscles, and you can come on, hug yourself here, just getting a nice stretch out, stretch out, stretch out. Okay, so let's move to the, the lower half of the body now. So I want you to, with your left foot, take a half step forward and push your foot out. Make sure the foot's going straight out in front of you. And I just want you to pull the toes towards your body. Really feel as if you're trying to touch the toes to your shin or to your knee. Sitting tall. You should feel this in the calf muscle, the gastrocnemus muscle. Then place your hands onto your bent leg. Or the foot flat on the floor. I want you to start to move forwards from the hips and from the waist, inclining forwards. And feel the stretch moving up the back of the leg. Up the hamstring, the buttocks, the lower back, the upper back, to the top of the head, and around to the forehead, to the nose. Make sure you're not letting the head hang forwards or hunching the upper back. Feel the stretch all at the back of the body. So head from the toes all the way to the top of the head, the forehead, and the nose. Like the pulling of an arrow into a bow. When you relax, you just push your shoe back up. Then Hold onto the chair, with the other foot, take half step forwards and push the foot back. Make sure again the leg is going straight out in front of you. And pull the toes towards you. Really feel like you're trying to touch the toes of the outstretched foot towards the, sh the shin of the outstretched leg. You feel this in the calf muscle, the gastroc, knee muscle. Holding the stretch, you feel it in the quadriceps here as well. Holding the stretch, but you're not holding your breath. And again, place the hands onto the bent leg, bring the foot flat on the floor. You're going to incline forwards, keep the back nice and straight. Of course, you're moving from down here, but keep the back nice and straight. Start to incline forward and feel the stretch moving up the back of the leg. Feel that superficial uh, back line on the back of the body. Take the weight of the body, up the body down through your arm here. Make sure that the body's going straight forward, not going left or right. Feel the stretch again from the toes along the sole of the foot, the back of the body to the top of the head, the forehead, into the nose. Again, make sure the head's not going forward, you're not hunching it the back. Sink the ribs, fill the back. And again, like pulling an arrow into a bow. And you relax. Just pushes yourself back up, or just pushes you back up. Okay, bring the foot back in, ankles underneath your knees. I want you to place your left ankle onto your right knee. Be careful if you don't have any problems with the knee here. Really relax the hip, relax your ankle to protect your knee. Then bring your heel in towards your groin. Uh, if this is too difficult for you, you can skip this one. Okay, it's a really good stretch. We're going to stretch the piriformis muscle, the muscle that runs underneath your buttock. You know, the glutes, the gluteus maximus, the largest muscle in the body and the muscle that runs underneath it that connects the femur, the bone in the upper leg, to the, the sacrum part of the spine. It can get weak if you do have, have uh, excessively tense uh, buttocks, glutes. So this is a really good one for getting the piriformis muscles. So wrap your arms around your leg, not through the leg, around your leg, and pull your knee towards your chest, sitting up. Sink your ribs to fill you back, and you should feel it in the muscle underneath the buttocks. You feel it in the buttocks as well. Holding the stretch, but not holding breath. You hold this one for a little bit longer. It's a really, really good stretch if you can do it. Really, really good stretch if you can do it. Really good one for if you do have problems with the muscles in the lower back. Hold this for longer. I've heard, I've read, and people, some people recommend you hold this for up to two minutes. It's a good stretch. Oh, really good stretch. Holding the stretch, but make sure you're not holding your breath. Place the other ankle onto your knee if you can. Bring the heel in towards your groin. Wrap your arms around your leg. Again, again, not through the leg. Wrap your arms around your leg and pull your knee towards your chest. Sitting up, sink the chest, round the back. Sink the ribs to fill the lower back. Head up. Again, really feeling that muscle underneath your buttock. Holding the stretch, but not the breath. Already stretch. Looking at the release. Again, you can hold this one for a little bit longer. So I want you to take your left hand towards the back of the chair, just as far back as this is comfortable for you. Take your right hand onto your left thigh. So you're going to do the upper body now, the spine. So your right hand onto your left thigh. Sitting up, you're going to turn from your waist to your shoulders and from your neck. Turn into your or to your left. From the waist to the shoulders and from your neck. Holding the stretch, but you're not holding your breath. Make sure you're sitting up. Make sure you're not excessively tense in any one part. A nice even stretch all the way up the back. Look into the neck. Holding the stretch. And you can pull yourself around with your arms here. You want to grip the neck. Stretch. Holding the stretch, but you're not holding your breath. Take the other hand towards the back of the chair, just to, again as far as it's comfortable for you. Take the left hand onto your right thigh, sitting up. Again, you're going to turn from the waist, the shoulders, and then from the, the neck, from the lower down to in, the middle down to in, the upper down to in. Turning, breathing in. Waist, shoulders, neck. Holding the stretch. Nice, even stretch all the way at the back. Again, if you want an extra bit, you could pull yourself around with your arms. Holding the stretch, but you're not holding your breath. Oh, and release. Just feel the body spinning. 
So go a little bit wider with your, your feet. Push your hands onto your thighs, fingers on the inside, thumbs on the outside. We're going to work the spine in this direction and we're going to snake the spine. So you have 32 to 33 uh, vertebrae of your, of your spine. Let's see if we can feel each one of those vertebrae. So start at the top of those, top two bones of the spine there, axle and axis. The head goes down. It's really very straightforward here, working down through the spine. Working down through the spine. I'll feel each one, make sure you're going straight forward, working down, dropping down, pay the weight down of the upper body down through the arms and the legs. And drop down. You can hang here for a bit, bit of traction. Feel the spine, seat the ribs, feel the back, seat the chest, round up the back, holding the stretch. Again, be careful on these if you don't have high or low blood pressure. Then the face comes up like a tortoise coming out of its shell. You're working down the spine again as you come up. Just do this a few times, just snaking the spine. Snaking, working down the spine, and going forward and down, working down the spine, and going up and back. Make sure you're going straight up and back and straight forwards and down. And then, then uh, kind of a little bit of an exercise for your core and bringing the whole body together after you've done those, those stretches. The stretches, they are a bit segmented. They're not really truly tight here. They are segmented. They're not really working the whole body in all of them. So we'll just do a sit to stand, bringing the core into it and getting the whole body uh, into the upright position. We have, a, in Buddhism, they call the the four dignities. The four dignities are the four states we spend most of our time in. We have a lying down, uh, sitting down, uh, standing up, and walking. And we have those 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 places in between those stages, and this is the stage in between sitting down and standing up. So I just want you to bring your feet back so your toes are beneath your knees. Place your hands onto where the thighs and the knees meet. Nice lengthening of the spine. So the incline forwards. Move from your core. Move from your center. Imagine you have a ball in your belly, about three fingers below the belly button, and in the centre body. You're going to move from here. Uh, just incline forwards ever so slightly. Make sure the head's not hanging forward, you're not hunching the upper back or uh, bulging or, or curving in the lower back. I just want you to take the weight of the upper body down through your arms, down through the legs, into the ground, down through the heels. Uh, tense the buttocks, the back of the legs, lean a bit more forwards, push down, and you should be able to stand or push yourself straight up until you're in a standing position now. Feet about the same distance as your hips and shoulders apart. And we'll just do the sit down as well. So you're going to bring your arms up into this. Let's sit yourself down. But you don't want that last minute lunge just before you sit down, before you place your bum down. Then bring yourself up, so incline forwards. Bring yourself up from your core as well, so incline forwards. Take the weight down through the feet. And push up and again, there should be that uh, lunge. Involuntary noise. Lower yourself down. Sitting down, lowering yourself down. Knees in along with the toes. And again, you don't want that lunge, that last minute uh, drop. You want to lower yourself down, so you're using your core muscles. Moving from your center. So down, push down with your center, push up, roll from the heels towards the toes, push up to a standing position. You can imagine here that you're carrying something really heavy. Like you've got a bigger bowl of water in between you, in your arms. You don't want to spill any of this water. So you're sitting down. Again, you don't want that last minute lunge. And when you're coming up as well, you don't want that. <coughs> it's kind of controlled. Take your balance, push up. Okay, so give it a go. So the sit to stand and kind of that uh, lowering yourself down. And as I talked about earlier, we kind of have those those four dignities. They're lying down, sitting down, standing up and walking. And this is the transition between sitting down and standing. And in, in a later film we'll do, or I'll do with you, hopefully, some some standing and we'll do some, some walking as well. So that's uh, me for now. So I hope you can glean something uh, from what we've just done there and I'll see you in the next film. Bye.